Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to be presenting to you an episode about aero maps from pitch data. Now, I've written two race car articles about this. One I wrote, I think if my memory serves me correctly, would have been back around about 2011, 2012. And also to another article that I wrote about this was actually very, very recently in race car engineering would have been either the latest edition or the second edition as of October, 2024. And for me, what I'm about to talk about is very much the companion video to those two articles. But the other reason that I'm um, doing this is that over the last couple of months, indeed over the last year, one of the things that I have been seeing is a complete over-reliance on hitting the, the go baby go button and having everything worked out for you. And don't get me wrong, you could contend that the chassis Mera modeling toolbox falls into um, that category, but there will be times where everything goes south on you, where you will just look at stuff and you'll hit the magic tools and it won't quite get there. And really what I wanna do in this tutorial today is to show you what to look for and to show you why looking at error maps, particularly when you look at it from a pitch data perspective is such a powerful tool. So let's get started. Okay, so when it comes to looking at um, uh, error modeling, error maps, absolutely critical step in race car modeling, and particularly once we're starting to talk anything north of about something like F3, GT3, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's a do not pass go, do not collect $200. Yet the most overlooked channel for modeling is pitch. And for me, it's a huge blind spot. And it's a huge blind spot that I see so many people whether it be graduate students and formula student, formula RC, right through to the big end of town and F1, factory sports cars, et cetera, et cetera. And it still blows me away what a huge blind spot it is. So what, what we're gonna to be to do, to doing today is we're going to discuss it, and then we're gonna talk about how you can manipulate it. And indeed, one thing that I'll say from the get-go is if you want a little bit more detail about this, I'd really refer you to those two race car articles that I've written because, I content, because I'll go, go there in a little bit more depth. But really the purpose of our video today is to introduce you to it and to get you starting to think about it. Okay, so what do we mean by pitch? What we mean by pitch is the average of the front dampers and the rear dampers respectively. That's it. So what we're talking, so we're talking front pitch is the average of the front left damper sensor and the front rear damper sensor divided by two and the rear pitch is the rear left damper sensor plus the rear right damper sensor divided by two. Simple, uh, as simple as, and as we're going to uh, see very, very shortly, it's a really, really powerful tool. And, in, uh, and indeed, I think this has actually been turbocharged now that the track replay simulation has gotten such wide use in the chassis sim community. And indeed, one of the things I wrote about in my article in 2011 and 2012 was that I kind of had my doubts about about using this in mid-corner conditions. And one of the things, one of the great things, and this was all written before the track replay simulation really started to get used quite heavily. But one of the great things about the track replay simulation is because that's now taking into account what's going on mid-corner, you can now lean on this. So it's a really powerful tool. Okay, so here's a really interesting case in point. Now, obviously this is some aero validation work that I did because of what it is, et cetera, et cetera, because it's live data, I've redacted all the scalings and you're not seeing any numbers. Now, one of the great, so let me walk you through the traces here. So actual is colored, simulated is black. So what we got, we got speed, steered angle, front pitch, rear pitch, and the simulated front and rear right heights. So we're gonna come back to that momentarily. Now, most people would take one look at this and say, oh yeah, okay, the straight stuff is done. Yeah, the mid-corner stuff needs a little bit of work, but oh my word, look at these green highlighted traces. This is all rubbish. It's it's all time to throw the baby out with the bath water. We've just flushed 15,000 euro down the toilet, etc., etc. And I can tell you right now, folks, that's a complete and utter nonsense. This, and this is where you've got to use simulation as a calculator as opposed to a magic wand. The model's trying to tell you something, and it's trying to show you where things are out of whack. And that's those really subtle hints that you've got to put, that you've got to pick on. And something I actually go into at great length in the boot camp. So really that's that's how you've got to start looking at this. So 
what was going on here? So what I did was I just figured, okay, well, am I dealing with some hysteresis? So I threw in some hysteresis and the colored is before the hysteresis, the black is after the hysteresis. So we've got speed, steered angle, front pitch, rear pitch, front and rear ride height. You can see it's, it's made a bit of a difference, but it's nowhere near to resolving this situation here. Now, folks, when you see this, listen to me. Listen to your Uncle Danny. I can tell you right now, when you get a situation like this, your first go-to is hand calculations. Repeat that with me again. Your first go-to is hand calculations. So let's take a look at some typical load transfer. So what we've got is load transfer is MT times AX times H on wheelbase, 1,200 times 1.5 1 times 9.8 times 0.5 on free. Now, strictly speaking, doing a little bit of a cheat here, but to an extent, though, it's actually not that much of a cheat because it's under brakes. So it's a relatively good representation of the forces that are going on. So your load transfer is going to be about 26.46 newtons. Now, if the damper deflection at the rear is going to be about 30 mil, and the spring rate, say, is about a 1,000 pounds force, and we're using a motion ratio of 1, our load transfer from the data is going to be Ten th it's going to be 10,500 newtons or 10,507.56 newtons to be precise. Folks, this is how you look at data. This is the data trying to tell you something. Because when you see a discrepancy between the load from what you're seeing in the damper data versus what you're seeing from a simple hand cap, when you see that sort of stuff, guess what? The data is telling you a story, and this particular story is that there's something in the aero map that we need to model. And this is pretty much kind of the canary in the coal mine that will tell you what to look for. That, folks, you've got to be really attuned for. Okay, so taking that as our lead, what I then did was I went through and said, okay, so what I was then doing is I was having a look at these simulated ride heights where I was getting the discrepancies. And that was kind of telling me, oh, okay. So at these particular ride heights, I am now going to need to take away things like aero, add aero balance, it's, uh, and add aero balance. And that allows you to chip away at the aero map to get um, to, to make sure that the simulated data is adding up to what the log data is doing. And that, folks, is not cheating. That, folks, is using your simulator as a calculator. And once you make that mental leap, the way that you use simulation just takes a whole nother level. Because very sadly, a lot of people just love to use simulation as this magic wand. And indeed, I would contend that the biggest trap, the big end of town, has wrapped itself into, and we're talking F1, we're talking factory sports cars, we're talking the upper ends of GT3, is they'll brag and boast about how they've run, you know, 10,000, 20,000 simulations to get a particular result. Well, guess what? When you're starting to run that number of simulations, invariably SOD's law means that you're actually manipulating the weaknesses in the, simu in the simulator. Now, not a lot of people will tell you that. I'll tell you that because, quite frankly, I want you to get results out of using Chassis Sim. And so if I think Chassis Sim is going to do something well, I'm going to tell you about it. Simple as that. So what? To, but when you start using simulation in that way, when you start to look at where the discrepancies are and say, oh, okay, well, the simulated ride height there is, say, 50 mil, the rear at 70 mil, and you go, oh, so... The data, the simulator, the, the differences between the simulated data and the actual data are telling me a story. And when you start going back to what those hand calculations are doing, oh, all of a sudden it becomes a whole radically different story. So in this particular case, what I did was I just simply, what was happening here was in the areas that I'd modeled, uh, I had data that was in a totally different uh, place in the right height envelope. So all I had to do was chip away, chip away, chip away, chip away, and chip away. And then all of a sudden, the correlation came to me. And remember what I've uh, and remember what I've said on countless occasions, and I've also stated this, and I also state this in the boot camp. Just remember, folks, correlation is a consequence. It's never the end result. You chip away at the fundamentals, the correlation will come to you. It always does. 
And once you understand about how to manipulate that, getting correlation like that is an absolute must. And indeed, this is for me where the track replay simulation absolutely shines. And this is something I go into in a little bit more depth in that article in Race Car Engineering, and I would certainly refer you to that. So to sum up, okay, pitch data is an absolutely critical tool in correlating narrow map. And indeed, when I am doing my correlation, there are two channels I'm watching like a hawk. I am watching the roll data to make sure that I've got um, my roll stiffness, that I've got my roll couples and my roll stiffnesses correctly, but I'm also watching the pitch data like a, uh, like a hawk. And particularly when it comes to aero, wow, it's, it's it's a valuable insight and indeed particularly a big a big step forward with this model was understanding what they did through the track replay simulations once i understood that then all of a sudden what was going on with the aero map became just so much more straightforward remember hand calcs are your best friend folks make no mistake the uh, your calculator is such a valuable, valuable, valuable instrument. This is my, this is my, here you go. This is my HP 48G. I've had this since 1993. This has saved my neck on more occasions than I care to remember. Then once you understand that, it's just a matter of using the simulated data versus the actual data to plug in the gaps. So that will do it for this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. And we'll catch you in either the next chassis tutorial or the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.